dance, you can dance, everybody's out of control. You can dance, you can dance while watching Paw Patrol. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, oh crap! I've been bamboozled. Oh no! Ah, oh, dang it! Ah, oh, uh, guys, uh, guys, I'm guys, <laughs> guys. Paw Patrol, huh? Tell us more, man. When you're not in control, <laughs> I got a buddy that I kayak with who brags about how bad Paw Patrol is. And like one day he started singing it, and I was like, I don't know what you're doing. And he's like, Paw Patrol. And I was like, What uh, is Paw Patrol? I don't know. I don't know. And um, kid show. Yeah, he told me all right? about Paw Patrol. Yeah, it's, and, uh, it's got uh, like uh, public service figures. Yeah, dumb. As Super dumb. Puppies. Or well, I've never yeah, watched that. I don't know either, but I think yeah. it's like puppies as like police officers yeah. and fire department. I don't so, know. For all you idiots out there who procreated, well, uh, uh, you probably know what it is. You learn from your four decisions. Oh, her name was Kate. <laughs> well, <laughs> wow. Whoa. All right. We're getting into it. There was more than one Kate. <laughs> <laughs> Wow! I once said not at the same time. I once said to my wife when she was like, "Was was that a Kate issue?" And I go, "Which Kate?" She goes, "How many Kates are back?" Wow. Oh, I was like, "There's my yeah, Kate." None of your business. Lots of Kates. Lots Maybe of best orders, not to know. Lots of Amy's. Lots of them. Wow. Yeah, lots of them. How about Nettie? Is there Nettie there? Eddie, I need some help, buddy. <laughs> are you? He's not. He's not doing that. When you hear the tone, oh, it will be exactly geez. time to get another drink. <laughs> Just a little drink. Wow. And a little drink. Hold on, folks. This is uh, three of three right here. What you guys did not know about is before we before we logged on where I was singing whatever I was singing when we started, uh, uh, we, were, we, were, we were taking a biomedical break, we, and uh, during that time... We decided to um, sing this like a, a the Dame of Broadway. The Dame of Broadway. Yes, yes. So we were we were show firing oh it. With, I mean, and like I was the lead, but the backup was I was really bringing. I was bringing the brass so, section. Oh man, it was big. It was bold. <laughs> it was impressive. Similar to like today's dream. Oh, uh, Salacha. Salacha. Today we're having something I think you're gonna like. Really? Yeah, this is a Patrick drink, not a Ben drink. And this is. There's rum in this one, if I mm-hmm. read the show notes correctly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I populated that on Thursday, I think. Oh. Um, oh, oh, oh. That's a lot of drinks. That's a lot going on there. That's a lot of it's, a, it's all over there. So, Woo! this is, we had a daiquiri a while back. Ah. This is a That was like the Nicolas Cage's acting career spectrum. Wow. <laughs> that <went> everywhere. <laughs> wow. All over the place. <laughs> This is a Hemingway daiquiri. <laughs> yeah, I liked the story because I guess um, Ernest Hemingway, who spent a good deal of his writing life in Key West, and okay. also in um, Eastern or Western Europe and Spain and things like that, he was like, I want a daiquiri that's more booze and less sweet. Can okay. you cut the sugar and add? So what they made was, this is, and the recipe's in the show notes if you guys want to make this for yourself. But it's good. It's... It's white rum, two ounces of white rum, half an ounce of maraschino liqueur, one ounce of fresh lime juice. Now, I had just more than one ounce because, well, I had like a, a lime, so I just juiced the whole lime for this, and then grapefruit juice. Um, so it's, they, that's what it is. That's they, there's there's something that's making that, that, my that, my jawline keeps tightening up every time that I drink grapefruit it. Grapefruit zip. It's the grapefruit that is uh, is making me go. Um, it is. It that punches you right in the tongue. But right in the uvula, 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 uvula. Yeah, my vulva. That's no, no, we don't have that. Nope, nope. You've, uvula is yeah. the hangy thing in your in your tonsils, in the back of your throat. Well, the third episode, my mouth's not forming that way, so I'm just gonna say vulva. Not a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so last episode, we, oh, I forgot to tell you the dirty joke off the air. Oh, yeah, we'll tell you. Yeah. Um, we said we would get back to the format. I keep cranking these out because it's kind of fun to just get Ben. If, if Ben is off his game, Ben's a lot more fun on the podcast. Oh, you want to throw a curveball? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> you want to see something special? No, keep it, keep. 
Oh, what? Do you want to see something special? Uh, you were you were going somewhere. You were saying things. No, I was going to say, do we want to do Center and Saint moments and get back? We do. We do want to find the, the we, actual. We, we, we used to have a format. Welcome to episode forty three. Forty three. Well, four three. Put your pants on, Eddie. Oh, Eddie, Eddie. Pants on. Eddie's already been here, so he's like, I'm off the clock. I can do whatever I want. I can wear my pants where I want to. I you can, can put them right back on because <laughs> you're a bartender and uh, you're only a bartender. You're so, not part of this podcast. I know, I know you don't watch a lot of movies, so you say. Uh, movie, movie picture shows? We, yes, those. We, we watched one recently um, called St. Vincent. Uh, it's a Bill Murray flick. Uh, I, a great movie. I have wanted to see it for a while. It's a great movie. And um, finally had a chance to finally sit down and wait into it. And then, and then Cammie came to join me. We were going to go watch... Uh, a man named Otto, mm-hmm. which she had, she'd read the book um, and wants to see the movie. Um, it's a heavy watch. And Asher watched it and he's like, it's good, but it's not like. It's not feel good. Fuzzy, it's good, fuzzy but bunnies. It's not feel good. Yeah. So like, we're like, oh, we want to watch that. It sounds wholesome, kind of a thing. Nope. But I. No? Not wholesome? Not, not in this, like, well, I imagine. So for me, like St. Vincent was was that was a wholesome movie. I agree. And I and it, it, and as I was watching, I was like, oh, this is this is the Sinner and Saint. This yeah. is the oh, podcast. Yeah. yeah. Because it it in the episode, this is a Bill Murray movie, and and uh, Melissa McCarthy is mm-hmm. in it. Um, and I forget the the young gentleman's actor, and yeah. then Naomi Watts plays a Russian prostitute. Mm-hmm. Who's um, Bill Murray's? Who's Bill Murray's? Yes. Um, Employee. Employee, <laughs> yes. Oh, employee oh, is, is. I don't know what you're calling yes. prostitute. Um, but the, the, she works for me. Yes, but the, in the but as the movie unfolds, like Bill Murray's character in the movie is kind of just that he's skeptical and jaded, much like the the host of a podcast that I have recorded with, um, where where there's kind of cynical and jaded what? of the world. And oh, kind of, I, yeah, I have no idea. I, I, that, I, I know, resemble you're, that. You're very, you're very Pollyanna. I very, everything's that. rosy. I and, am not Polly or Anna. I mean, there's some. Well, well, although you, they're, 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 they're in the closet too, aren't there's, they? There's been some <laughs> right there. Um, but but as the story unfolds, you just like he's kind of this crusty character. Um, I identify with that. <laughs> but as you get into it, you realize there's some really. There's some genuine goodness uh, that is there, and so it's it's very much this center and saint moment. And, and in fact, the project for the young man in school becomes find a modern day saint. He goes to a private Catholic school, and and the assignment is that find mm-hmm. a find a modern day saint. And so he names um, his neighbor Saint Vincent, who mm-hmm. is uh, Bill Murray, played by Bill Murray, and he shows like on the outside he's he's not pleasant. He's he's a drunk. He's rude. He's, he's a drunk. drunk. He's a gambler. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh my God! There's all bits. Everything <laughs> everything on the surface, like he's the worst human ever. Yeah. But then when you actually get to know him, you learn that he uh, he was a Vietnam War veteran who saved uh, his his compatriots mm-hmm. in the war. Um, his wife was struck him with what seems to be dementia mm-hmm. and has, has showed like generous, gracious love to her yeah. uh, in her final years without her knowing. Like there's, mm-hmm. there's these beautiful moments and which is part of like when, as I was watching, I was like, yes, like that is, that is where we all live. Yeah. Like religious oh, or yeah. non-religious yeah. or not, like yeah. we all live in that of like, I have parts of me that I, I'm not proud of. Like I, they're not the parts of me that I would want written about me in a newspaper. Yeah, yeah. Right? And, and that's all of us. But it's, I want yeah. the good part scene, which is why Facebook exists, so I can celebrate the good parts of me, right? We, oh, look how much I love my fa- fa- family and my, make them, yeah, yeah, family, yeah right. it's, it's, face- a, it's a social manipulation thing. Um, social <laughs> manipulation. Uh, where we only get to put the best parts of ourselves, or the face- we put the ugly parts out that look pretty, right? It's, it's, it's the favorite question I now, when I interview anybody for a whether it's a job or a board position or whatever, I say, what, what is your worst quality about you? I, I love asking that question because here's how people answer it. Here's how most people answer it. I'm a patient. Well, I, I'm just a workaholic. So I, I mean, I mean, if you, if you bring me on, you just know I'm going to, I'm going to work. I'm going to work really hard. Right. And like, so we take something bad, but we try to, we try to turn around and yeah, turn it into yeah. like, this capitalistic value sure. of like, well, like 
I don't know how to have boundaries and respect my own time and energy. Yeah. And so for that, you can know that you're you're gonna get like work all an over exhausted, over frustrated, zealous. You're gonna get me real pissed in about <laughs> ten days. <laughs> right. What, what, can you answer that? What's your worst quality? Um, my worst quality is. Um, um, While you're thinking, I, I will pepper in. Okay, St. Vincent's fantastic. It is. Um, it has it has revolutionized my home in two ways. Okay. If dinner sucks, at the very end of that, Naomi watched they're having like a big meal, and she's like, "How is that?" And he's like, "Beats hunger." And like that's that's our thing. So if we have like a really unappealing dinner, that's right. yeah. What'd you have for dinner? Be hunger. Yeah, like, it's, yeah. it's fine. Like it's better than being hungry. Yeah, all right. And when he goes to the bank and they're like, it is what it is, and he's like, you know what that means? Yeah. You're screwed. Uh-huh. And you shall remain screwed. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so we don't even say it is what it is now. It's it's just like, hey, like I'll ask my wife, how was your work day? Uh, I'm screwed and I'm gonna remain screwed. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um your worst quality. My worst quality is I I believe um, I believe, and I'm trying not to, I'm not trying, I'm trying not to take a bad quality and make it sound nice, but I, I, I hope is my worst quality. There, there are some things that just need to die. Oh yeah. Um, and I have a hard time letting some things just You want to keep them on life support? I, I want to make them redeemable. Yeah. Um, and, and they just need to die. Mm-hmm. Um, either because they're. They're all, they're they're destructive or yeah. whatever in their own right, yeah. um, and they just need like that. That's mine of like just being hopeful. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I had an interesting moment, I, and I thought about I thought about you, and I thought about the podcast oh, or whatever. Right. Um, I was is this around hope? Oh no, do you have hope for me? No, no, no. There's no yeah. No, let's no, die. <laughs> let, 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 <laughs> no, I've let that die. Yeah, pull the board on that. We were coming home. You and I. No, no, no. Because <laughs> we, we don't live together. Kim um, and I were coming home from um, down south. And we okay. it was late at night. And they're doing a lot of it's summer construction season, yes. obviously, oh or whatever. So 465 is a mess around Indianapolis. Always is. And I always follow Google Maps because it gives me nice... It, it really? Gives, it gives me the quickest way, yes. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Even when I think I know the quickest way, Google Maps has proven me wrong. Okay. That that my way is wrong a million times. Google Google Maps has proven to be okay honest. I should use that, with the exception of this last oh, trip. Okay. So it it took me a workaround around some construction of four sixty five, which I was fine with. I for me when I'm traveling, as long as I'm moving, I don't care if it takes longer. As long as I'm moving, yes. So oh like, gosh, even yes. if it takes twenty minutes longer, as long as I'm moving, yeah. I will. I can convince myself. This, this I'm at least going somewhere because I'm not doing. I'm not just yeah. sitting, right? Yeah. And I and I know it's not true. Yeah. Like no, it. But as long no, as I'm moving, don't take I this from me. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's so true. So, so Google Maps brought me around this workaround, but then it eventually put me on 465 that was supposed to be moving. Mm-hmm. But then it got into this construction zone of 465, and it had this express lane. Oh, yeah. Right? The express lane yep. that's on the inside that's cut off by concrete pavilions or whatever. Yep. And and I thought, there it is. And, and, it. and as I was coming to it, I was like, that's it. And so I, I jumped in it. Knowing that my exit was still two and a half miles out, yeah, and I thought I I've never seen these express lanes go for a long distance. You so missed I'm, your exit for sure. I I missed my exit and I missed the next three exits. Yeah, it took me all the way back around to the north side of Indianapolis. Yep, and I was in. It was a center moment for sure. Because there were there were three cars. I was the third car back. The car in front of me was traveling fine, had been traveling fine on fourth. So when they kind of went that way, I was like, oh, let's follow them. Yeah. Um, were they they're, going to they're moving. Too? They were not. Okay. Um, but then the first car, as we came into the express lane, was going at 65 miles an hour. By the time we got through the express lane eight miles later, it, they were traveling at 30 miles an hour. And I'm like, I don't. I don't know why you are continuing to slow down. There is nowhere else to go. 
No one is merging on and no one is merging off. And then when the chance to merge on with the faster moving traffic, mm -hmm. they that's when they ratcheted down from 45 to 30. And I was like, and that is a very um, Hoosier thing. Yeah. I kind of I want to be nice. I'll let everybody. I don't know what it is, but like when the chance to accelerate and join the rest mm -hmm. of the traffic happens, mm -hmm. Hoosiers are fantastic at being like, oh, I know what should be good and beneficial, but I'm going to do yeah. the opposite. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Which should be the state motto. Despite what could be beneficial, I am going to do the opposite. I thought when you said it was, we're trying. It's, it's, and all yeah. of that fits in. Together. We're trying to be beneficial and irresponsible. We're not. We're going to be beneficial by doing the opposite. I, um, I never take a one lane express lane, and here's why. Because anybody can be a jerk in that lane. Oh, to man. your point. Here's the other thing. If somebody gets, so let's just say two cars up, somebody's on mescaline and they're hallucinating. <laughs> And they think that the walls are closing in and they start ping-ponging like a gutter, like a bowling ball through the gutter rails, and they're going to turn that car sideways. And what now? I'm trapped in there. And really, it's an ultimate fear of not being able to have access to a bathroom. Because <laughs> I'm like, well, that hey, idiot up I, there. I is just had a little trick and I'm all of us. Home. And the last thing I want to do is poop the front seat of my pants. Mescaline? Mescaline. Yeah, hallucinogen. That's and no, that's where you went. That's that was your. Well, I just. I mean, of all things, like well, I just grabbed a random drug. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can talk about. I guess uh, so. That guy out there is all hot up on Delta Eights. <laughs> Sorry, I guess we can say illegal drug. That's my bad. If you're listening, children, mescaline is a. Uh, it's a it's a type of paste that you use with your sticks for your glue projects in the first, fourth, and ninth grade. Um. Uh, no, man, I never take a one-lane express because some jackwad's going to screw it up for everybody. So, like, unless unless all the traffic is... Uh, but here's... You know who has it right? Chicago. Oh, uh, Hold on. No, no, no. Because no. I, I got screwed on an express lane in nope. Chicago. Then you didn't read the signs. No, I did. This guy just was... Then you didn't know where you were going. No. So here's what's going to happen. When you get onto the express lane in Chicago, it says... Next exit, 79th Street. Next exit, 91st Street. Next, Indy doesn't do that. It's like, you want an express no, right. lane? There it is. There it is. But we're going to take it all the way around. Yep. We don't know when it merges <laughs> back. Because I know the express lane you're talking about. No, 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 no. I've done the express lane in Chicago, and the dude slowed down to 40 miles an hour. Oh, go around them. It's a four-lane express no, no, lane. There's one. It was oh, I've never seen that one. of those single construction express lanes. Oh, construction. It was that. Okay. And yeah. it was like... Well, great. Now those three lanes are booking it. And Did your horn not work? Oh, my gosh. I love a horn. I, my wife does not, I will honk my wife's horn. And she's like, you cannot honk the horn when I'm driving. And I'm like, the hell I can. <laughs> Watch me. Mm, girl, check this out. <laughs> I do think there should be different types of horn. Like, we should have, we need to have the, hey, bye-bye. Hey, hello. Hello. hey, hello. Lights hey, green. No, just the hello. Hey, I know you. Hey. Oh, okay. Uh, hey, Bob. Hey, good day. And then like the da 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 da. Like yes, your phone's uh, your your lights I'm green. I'm waiting. Move. And then like the bah. Hey man, come on. And then the bah. Let's fight. You, oh man. Yeah. Go ahead. That's the Go that's ahead. the <laughs> let's fight. That's the I love the last word. All I could think is like, <laughs> we're pulling over and we're having this out. Da -da 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 -da. Can I ever tell you that it's a fire cat? Like, <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the the I was this was a couple summers ago. I'm coming back from Cincinnati for work. But well, for work in a loose term because it, it'll make sense in a minute um, <laughs> I was down there that day doing surveillance and 74 from Cincinnati back to Indy went down to one lane for summer construction uh -huh. I get it, it's not a big deal but it's like two lanes merging down into one, we're all in this together we're all doing it together, right? Like, so I'm in the left lane Yep. this minivan in the right lane I think was not paying attention so the car in front of them, like, elongated out enough space for me to merge in. Sure. So I merge in, and the guy in the minivan comes unglued. 
<laughs> just like that, like I, I like s- pulled down my pants and pooped on his hood. Yeah, like right, he yeah. was vividly yeah, angry. Yeah, and I was like, I don't. I don't know what's I don't, happening. I, don't, right I didn't do anything wrong, dude. Like, you're, and like, yeah. So then, we're in construction for, not exaggerating, 12 to 15 uh-huh. minutes. It's taking half an hour, 40 minutes. Okay. He's right. Like, he, I can't see his headlights. Sure. He's on uh-huh. me so tight. He's he's fading over. That's accomplishing something. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. He's fading over. And I'm just like, I remember this so clearly. I'm listening to the Grateful Dead. <laughs> like, I'm in a pretty good mental space. Sure. And I'm just like, wow. And I'm fascinated by his Friday is ruined. Yeah, I have right. ruined his Friday <laughs> by simply merging, just merging, like yeah. it would have happened no matter what. And so I, I started thinking, like, is this like I have a I have a nice car? Is uh-huh. this? Does he think this is a social class thing? Yeah, because right. like I'm not I'm not rich. Right. I just don't have kids, so I have a nice car. Like <laughs> I I have the amount of money I have to spend on things, and I was like. This is weird. This is super weird. Yeah. So we get stopped all the way dead stop in traffic. And he just bumps me. Just a little bit. Just barely bumps me. I just, I love it. I love it when everything comes together. Uh-huh. When you didn't plan it. <laughs> but everything comes together. I just so happened, not this shirt of course, but just so happened to be wearing that day a t-shirt. that's a black t-shirt uh-huh. with a skull in the middle. And around it says zero F's given. <laughs> I know the shirt. Yep. I put my car in park. <laughs> I got out. He's got his cell phone up. He's ready. He's uh-huh. ready to get oh, it. Yeah, yeah. I, I just go, get as close as you want, sweetheart. And just pointed to my shirt. Got back in, put it in drive, and sat. Because we still weren't moving. Right, yeah. And I'm like, the hell were you thinking? Well, what, right. what was going to happen? Where, where's this going to go? I mean, you want to zip, go, there's nowhere to go around me. No, Literally, we are yes. all cattle in the line, ready to be shot. Like, just, there's nowhere to go. What is your meltdown about? I, I took a road trip once back to back to Missouri to see family, and as I was coming back, there, there must have been a horrible accident on 70 the other direction. Okay. Because there, there were no cars coming. Yeah. Eventually, the west, the eastbound traffic stopped. Oh yeah! Like what? It was so bad that for emergency vehicles to get there, they yeah. had to run through the median or the yeah. whatever the case was. Like it, it was bad. Um, and and so like we we are stuck. Like we're just stopped. We're not slow rolling. We are stopped to the point that like people, as they do on the interstate, like they're just going to cut across the median if they're able to, and get on the other, you know, the westbound and go find another exit and work yeah. the back roads or whatever. So like we, because we are stopped, like I just, I just put it in park, and I'm like, sure, there's we're not moving, like yeah. we're not going anywhere. We've been sitting here for five minutes. Yeah. Well, in that time, three or four cars in front of me had decided, well, we're going to pull all across the median and we're going to go that way. And I and I had considered that, and I was like, I found again Google Maps is correct. Like I punched on Google Maps, yeah. and they're like, you have a delay, but this is the fastest route. And I was like, okay, well then. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to sit here. But three car lanes in front of me had emptied. Well, the guy behind me starts honking because he wants me to... I, I didn't pull up because I'm like, I, I could, but these cars from the inside may also choose to cut across the medium when right. I go. So I'm like, we're not going anywhere. The cars yeah. in front of me aren't moving or advancing in any direction. Yeah. And I'm like, I can move forward 30 feet or I can just sit here until it looks like traffic is moving. And so the guy behind me starts honking. <laughs> And I'm trying to make sure, you know, I, I, I drive older model cars, like I don't, I, and yeah. then I drive them in the ground, and in older model cars, when you're sitting there in the heat of the summer, they tend to overheat. Yeah. So I have the windows down, and I have the air off, and this guy is just laying on his horn behind me because I won't fill the 30 feet in front of me. His favorite kind of lock is Yes, lock. yeah. And, yeah. And so I, I, my window's down, I lean out the window, and I'm like, we're not going anywhere. If you want to go around me, feel free. Like... I, like, I wave him around. I'm like, go ahead, dude. If it makes you happy to be 30 feet more yeah. forward than where you are, yeah. knock yourself off. Not even knock yourself out, man. Like, I do not care. Yeah. Like, but I don't need to be 10 feet forward yeah. to feel like I'm getting anywhere while we are stopped in traffic. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just that, like, 
it's it's all I get it. It's mindset. Nobody wants to be stuck in traffic. Um, when you're traveling on a destination, you want to get to where you're like. It's just all of that, and I get that. I appreciate the fact when I when I am not pressured or stressed enough that I have enough wherewithal to be like, okay, I I know where I am. I know right. I right. I know what's going yeah. on, and I can take it in the moment. Like, yeah. yeah. It sucks. It sucks for all of us, and yet some people just lose their mind. It's incredible, man. It's it's all about that control. Yeah, I'm like I got I got to be that that much closer and it's like you, you don't. You really don't. And I get um, it. Like I get it. You're like well, this is a 12 hour trip. Mm-hmm. And then you're all of a sudden you're like now it's a 14 hour trip. Mhm. Yep, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> you ever slept in your car? Oh man. So my my in-laws have a place in Estes Park, Colorado, I've heard uh, of it. which is I've heard of wonderful. It. But it's it is a 17 to 18 hour drive out mm-hmm. there. That's right by Denver. Just just, it's just west of Denver. About an hour north of Denver. Yeah, northeast to northwest of Denver. Um, wonderful place. Great to go to when it's not summer. Um, and we'll be taking a trip there in the summer in a couple weeks. And I'm Idiots. Can't wait. Can't wait. Wait, uh, why when it's not summer? Because everybody's there? They're celebrating their 50th anniversary there. and so Who my, is? My in-laws. So uh, while they live here in town with us, we're going to travel halfway across the country. <laughs> <laughs> Suckers! Oh, you guys are idiots! Oh, you've got to be kidding me! They're dragging everyone to their part-time home. Well, my 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 wife's sister, her family lives out there, so we're going out there. Yeah, we're going out there. What's his name? Gopal. Gopal and Gopal and, and, and yeah, Kristen. Kristen. Yeah, and, yeah. And the kids. That's yeah, great. Idiots. It's wonderful. No, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah, be a uh, sounds like a fresh hell. I don't want to be a fly. <laughs> I'll take a uh, bull crap. I don't want to do for four hundred, Alex. Uh, this fiftieth anniversary will be held in Estes Park, Colorado, in the summer of twenty twenty three. Oh, what is my in laws' fresh hell dragging us across the country? Wonderful. Oh, get uh, with it, Jim and Kathy. I know you listen too. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if they listen. I don't, I don't even know. know you. I a I, be a better motorcyclist and drive safe. <laughs> B have your party at more express of war. Uh, Get a shelter. Sleep in your own bed. I don't mind. I don't mind taking the week off. I don't mind going out there. But it's summer in Estes Park is obligatory. Cool. Things I have to say is just on them all. Uh, I it's no fun. no. It's, Did I tell you about my in laws' fiftieth? No, because I don't care. Everybody I mean, I'm pretend, I can pretend I care, but I don't care. No, everybody. Forgot um, it. It's my. It's the weird thing is my parents also. It's their 50th anniversary, but um, oh, twinsies, married twins. It is. They they were married actually a day. Uh, Jim and Kathy got married on Saturday. My parents got married on a Sunday. So literally, their 50th yes, is yes. one day apart. Yeah. Now are your folks going out to Estes Park? No. <laughs> are they going to join? In can I send them in my? Can I send them instead? Um, Oh, no. in lieu of a gift, Patrick has sent his parents. Here's, here's my gift. Yeah, have fun. And their 50th anniversary, <laughs> consequently, is tomorrow. Just, so uh, have fun sharing that spotlight. They're not hiking anywhere, trust me. Yeah, that's, yeah. Wow. No, I, I will look forward to, I always enjoy getting away. Because uh, okay. I, I turn off, and I and that'll be that. Uh, and I'm glad to sell, 50 years is impressive. I mean, in today's world, 50 years... Is um is pretty unheralded. So, uh, I've heard on this podcast it's your lifespan. It's your expected lifespan. It's it. I, I'm uh, six years six years to the expiration date. Um, so hang on, these come out once a week. Yeah, yeah. And what's the simple? Figure it out. Three hundred. You got three hundred more of these to go. Are you serious? Well, Fifty two times yeah, six. Yeah. Congratulations. <sighs> Good luck finding a replacement. There will be no replacement. <laughs> there will be no continuation. Only sadness. Uh, no, it's it's it. It'll be nice. I'll enjoy the time away. Oh, I'll like enjoy going nightmare. out there. That sounds like a there will be frustrating nightmare. moments, but as as it happens with any family trip. Yeah, a family um, reunion to celebrate fifty years of marriage halfway across the country sounds so dumb. I would have been glad to take them to the Ninth Street Bistro. I yeah, loved, I would have loved to have done that. Now let me ask you this, and and you don't have to answer because this is personally picking, but like. If you were just like, we're not going to do that, but we would love to, we would love to take you to dinner and, and spend a Saturday with you here at the house, here at your house, we can all get in the swim spa or whatever. Like, is there, would they do that? Or is there the expectation of like, no, 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 you're going to Cal, you're going to Colorado. Like, we'll see you out there. Um, I don't, I don't know. 
I know. Kim and I have been very good from the beginning of our marriage of being like, look, you manage your family, I manage mine. And whatever yeah. whatever you kind of dictate needs to be managed with your family, like, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Like, um, uh, we, we've talked a little bit about this both on air and off air of like, um, we're, both of us are outsiders in our families. Like, we're not, we're not family. Like, we're not, I'm not Jim and Gabby's kid. They don't see me as, like, Cammy is not. Oh, I thought you meant Cammy was the outsider to her parents, and you were the no, outsider. No, 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 to your no. Parents. It's there. Jim and Kathy and and Kristen and Cammy, they're very much the family. Okay. And then and the grandkids are the family. Um, but the, oh, that's weird. But the son-in-laws are kind of we're we're there. We're there. We're allowed to be there, and that's okay. Um, that's really. And I would say, is. well, I would say it's also in some ways it's the same thing. It's the same thing on my family. Um, I will still say it's really elitist, despite the family. It's I don't know, I don't know, and maybe I don't. Maybe I'll do the same thing when I have kids and spouses. I don't know, but I I don't know. It's yeah. I, I've never been in that. I mean, obviously. Well, but. you have you have two children who have significant others. Yes. But you, I was I was here last week, and you were very welcoming of of one of them. Yeah. And seemed to be like very inclusive and. It's, I guess it would be hard for me to see you ostracize someone like that to be like, well, you're the outsider. Well, but this is the family. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say I feel ostracized, but there certainly is a there certainly is a difference, and and that's okay. Mm-hmm. Like I'm okay with that. I, I mean, certainly, at 22 years into a marriage, like we've just kind of figured out the roles and the routines. Um, it, hers is different because her family is close. Um, um, and, and our families are very different. Like my, my kids are old enough now that they, they, they see and recognize the differences, but they also recognize like the reality of yeah. like, what is, you know, they, they talk about, well, mom's family and dad's family and, and the differences that are present between them. And so it's, what it's, are you guys, the Montagues and the Capulets over here? We're very much that. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Well, and King and I are Romeo and Juliet. Oh, happy dagger. Yeah. I, I'd uh, take a fake death serum for Cammy. Would you then kill yourself with a dagger once you realized she was dead? Oh, I mean, there's... I mean, everybody's got to go their own <laughs> journey. I mean... I mean, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's... I, that story's I, been written. There's another story to be written, Ben. I, I, mean, might, that, uh, I might see <laughs> what that Greek life looks like. or I might I might find a real big bottom cook out there who can... Uh, <laughs> big bottom. You like the big bottoms? I don't. Oh, no, no it's, but... it's too much to do. Oh, my word. Guys, <laughs> guys, keep it trimmed. I, here's, a, here's a funny story. I, I took a... Um, I'm going to watch soccer. Keep going. No, yeah, 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 go ahead. Do whatever you need to do. In college, I took a Anderson University, Christian Church of God University, uh, private liberal arts. They had a human sexuality course, and it was... It was kind of among the students. It was kind of like, keep make it, sure keep, you, keep like it, it was kind of the, the naughty thing to take. Was uh, this uh, as an course? Anderson, it, was, it was, they, they talked freely about sexuality, which if, if you grew up in evangelicalism, sexuality oh, could not be. Gosh, it was so sexuality, sexuality is a sin with the small exception that if you were married, like it just yeah. is so, there's so much shame wrapped in sexuality so anyway it was kind of this course of like you take this course because then you can talk about sex freely and one of the first <laughs> one of the f- i'd like to talk about sex i must do it through education exactly yes it's well i gotta do this for credit for the grade and for to graduate for my degree mm-hmm. uh, but one of the it, it was known that early on in the class you would go around everybody had to answer the question is you have to say something that is sexual about you and everybody in the class had to go around and say something, but you could not repeat anything that was already said. So you had to say something unique. Okay. So, so you had to go first. I did not. I was one of the last ones. And like, I'm I'm a boob guy. I love the boobs. Uh, and like, yeah, obviously bad. that's one of the first ones that goes off the list in the classroom. Wait, and wait, wait, wait. I thought you were saying something sexual about yourself. So. That was kind of the point of sexuality is huge. Like, it, it's an all-encompassing thing. Is this a big bottoms joke? Sexuality is huge? Well, kind of. Because I was... The the question started on the other side of the class. And these were... Anderson usually had classes of 16 to 20. Okay. 
this was a class of easily 30 to 35. Okay. And the professor started on the other side of the room. Jerk. So I knew, like, I'm, I'm like, there's going to be nothing left in the spectrum of sexuality for me that, like, like I'm huh. like, I like boobs. I like I like like I like I, white teeth. <laughs> right, right. I'm a I'm a I'm a big fan of a well manicured hair. Like I one girl in the class said I I like to wear dresses. Like there was nothing that was really kind of off limits because sexuality the point was sexuality is determined by modern culture and standards. So it can be a lot of things. It can be emotional. It can, it can be, be a physical, million things. It can, it can be, be metaphysical. Mil- yes, it can be so yeah. many things, which was yeah. part of the gift of that class of of recognizing like Sexually can't be defined by these simple feminine, masculine characteristics. Okay. So well, by the time it came yeah. around to me, like I'm just kind of racking my brain of like, I, I don't know. What'd you say? I. <laughs> I oh, I can't wait. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. I, oh, good, I, good breath. <laughs> I like minty fresh breath. I. Kimmy and I had been in a relationship. Of course, big, big fan of this. I I'd broken up with Candy a maximum of seven times in our dating relationship, which is a podcast for another day. Um, <laughs> I don't know how much time do we uh, have. It's a podcast for another day. But and she is not a curvy woman in the least. Not a big bottom. Not a big saying. bottom. Okay. And and yet at the time the. Like, it was kind of one of those things of, like, I, I should have been caught off guard. This had been going on for 15, 20 minutes before it snaked around to me in the classroom. Oh, my God. Please say you like Big Bob. <laughs> I didn't, I've I, never wanted a story to end more <laughs> where you say Big Butts. I, boobs and butts. Uh, I said I like Big Thighs. <laughs> <laughs> Dork! I love it! I like thick thighs. And like as soon as I said it, I was like, no, I don't. I don't. I don't like I don't like sprinters. I like long distance runners. Those sprinters, they just they're quarter horses. And two of our very close friends were in the class and they had to be like, Matt. That? Uh, <laughs> well, that doesn't line up with Cammy. I'm going to go back and report to the source. The, that, woman, uh, the woman you're dating does not have uh, said thick thighs. According to Patrick, he likes fat bottom girls. All right, and, so uh, I'm going to be honest, guys. <laughs> live on the show, today's episode is thick thighs. Oh, uh, boy. Woo. Thick thighs. Wow. We have thick thighs. Do you love yourself? Um, I We... I, I do have thick thighs, but I feel like my thick thighs are proportional. Like, my son has a psychologist who he goes to, uh-huh. who we've nicknamed Thick Thighs, because he is a... Oh, is he just a weirdly... He's he's a very round man, but he has very thick, uh, thick thighs. Who was the... Um, I want to say Jamal Anderson. He was the running back for the Falcons when they went to the... Uh, when they went to the Super Bowl in like yeah, the yeah, yeah. 02, 02. And it's um, who maybe is it? the late nineties. Is, is it Aaron? Who's the Who's the Green Bay running back? Uh, oh, uh, uh, Quadzilla. Uh, yeah, Quadzilla. Uh, Dillon. Yeah. AJ Dillon. Yeah, AJ Dillon. Yeah. But I guess I guess the the Falcons running back from old, his thighs were so big and his waist was so small, like off the rack pants could not fit. <laughs> yeah. Because he was like, no, like I I really just have like crazy huge quads yeah. but like I'm an athlete so I yeah. never really trim waist um, yeah quadzilla AJ Dillon it's, so you really just love running backs I don't I, do, I don't I I am thick uh, thighs yeah. thick thighs is what I like I um <laughs> that's awesome that story could not have, the only thing that could have been better was big butts I hated the like as soon as I said it I was like why did I say that? I can't believe I said that. Why were you so nervous? To say, well, because you were a kid, I guess. I mean, you're Kids are stupid. Nineteen yeah. years old, and yeah, you're saying stupid. something like, "I had one kid in the class who's like, my penis hooks off to the left," and I was like, "Blah, I wouldn't have said wow. that." Wow! Like one kid talked about a freckle on his penis. I was like, "I wouldn't have said that." Like, wow! <laughs> uh, viewer discretion is advised. We uh, we're talking about sex. Uh. Binge. Have you have you heard these? So, um, there's this weird new ad <laughs> out there 
and I've heard it a few times, but it's for men who apparently a curved unit is a medical condition, and so they are there's some sort of something that can fix this. But I was like, wait, what? Like, like a stick? Like, I, like a? I don't know. I don't know because I've not researched it. Because fortunately, I don't have that malady um, in, my, in my physical life. Well, the, um, the I was like, don't they all just typically go straight? Like, as, I don't know. Well, the interesting thing about this I class is you, you also problems. learned about, like, what were medical problems. Sure. And I don't know. Your hands are so I, far. I don't know. I was like, we learned about uh, king size eggplants. Like, you're, it was so weird. <laughs> your hands were so weird. I don't know what you were doing. We learned about... Uh, how an Italian loaf of bread can be delicious on many recipes. <laughs> so, we, in this class, we learned about, you know, just stuff. <laughs> we, we learned about how you can actually fracture your penis. Even despite the fact that there's no bone. I've heard the and, urban and, legends. Right. You know, so we, we actually did case studies on this as part of the class. Like, it oh, was a... I don't know what I don't know what the class was, but it it certainly was those things. And was it, it held in a basement at eleven p.m.? <laughs> well, it, oh hi. Huh? We actually did was it used to be the sex class. It used to be taught by this couple. To see oh, I bet it was. It was like seventy years old, and people would talk about how much they talked about their sex life. Like, and then they'd invite us back to their dungeon. I'm like, I don't want to hear two seventy year olds talk about their sex life. Well, why would you? No, right. And so the the year that I took it, it was one of the new professors. It was a it was one of the young female professors. Not young. She was married and had kids. Not not young. <laughs> Well, she wasn't young because obviously she had kids and she was married, so oh, I, clearly old. I don't want to be like well, used was up. Twenty-two year old young single female professor talking about. There was this a real sack of feathers who taught our class, who obviously showed up from the Civil War because she had children. Oh, she was twenty-two. Oh boy, context matters. I mean, <laughs> that was awesome. I've never watched you dig a hole faster and then jump in and just be like. Hey, <laughs> Sorry, Lisa. You uh, wow, calling her out by name. Thank, yeah, I'm sure she does not listen to this podcast. But uh, thanks, Lisa. Yeah, we're gaining <laughs> listeners. We've been begging for them. <laughs> tell a friend, please tell a friend. Wow, we, we need yikes, them. yikes. Um, what uh, are we done? I don't no, we, well, we are done. We are done. Nobody's oh nobody's Lord. listening to us after this. Maybe we just do two episodes a day. That was funny. So the teacher who was not old, who had kids and was married, you you were starting down that path. It was it, she was new to her professorship. Okay. Um, but she brought the seventy year olds back because people wanted to hear from the seventy year olds who were having sex. Wow. And I was like, I don't. Uh, yeah. This podcast brought to you by Astrolube. So here. Oh, no! <laughs> wow! You should not have come alive. And that comment, we I did, I did a wedding. Whoa. Whoa, guys, I don't know where this is going to go. I am so sorry. and <laughs> Sam, oh, it's insane. I did, We're going to stay on script. This and welcome to forty three. A, a good friend. I did a wedding for a good friend of mine. I did their. Oh, I good. I did their wedding. We show up. They did it at like a. Um, like a community center okay. uh, in the town that they near the town that they lived in, and as we pull up, there's a there's a truck in the parking lot that says Astro Glide, okay, DJ and events, and we're like, oh, he's the DJ's like, name was Astro Glide. We're like, what? Like my wife and I are like, what is this? So smooth. And so we go in. <laughs> <laughs> So smooth. Yes, that is the DJ's business Whoa. name. And I'm like, like we just thought it was hysterical. Wow. And so after the fact, like we reach back out to our friends and we're like, tell us about the DJ. And she's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Their business name He's was. He's so smooth. He's I'm awesome. Like, Their business name was Astroline. She's like, I don't. 
understand. They were they were later in life in their marriage. And then so, they should know exactly what well, Astro Glide they, was. I guess not, because they've had plenty of other. They were not teaching history. sex courses at Anderson University. I don't know what the story, but she did not. Uh, she did not know wow. the product, and I'm like, Astro Glide is a lubricant product for um, aging individuals. <laughs> not just aging new individuals to the territory. Really. We were giving it to her for our. Oh our no, 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 no! I don't, no, 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 no! I don't, I don't need, I don't need that inside peek. K- no. KY Astro Glide. No, 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 we're good, we're good, we're good. And it only takes a drop on the fingertips. Okay. To, yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just talking. saying. But it was hilarious. Like, I'm can't gonna, come back to the hilarity of it all. I'm no? gonna update all the right. show note for PG-13. That's the <laughs> thing I wrote. Because the the party don't start till I. Stop by. Don't stop. Pink. No. Okay. Yeah, I didn't get that reference at all. That was. It was. It. It still has been one of those things of like your DJ was a sex lubricant. Mm-hmm. Fancy. Mm-hmm. You're just. Sh- sometimes, sometimes your DJ just has to be a sex lubricant. <laughs> I'm going to type that in. Uh, sometimes, sometimes they do. Sometimes they do. Sometimes you need all the help. Sometimes your DJ just. <laughs> Wow, we've covered it all. We have covered it all. So here's what's really funny. Um, <laughs> I don't know what the crap we talked about earlier, but it reminded me of... We talked about uh, construction traffic, mm-hmm. uh, road rage, um, my in-laws 50th, and my parents 50th. So I'm going to... Are we about... We're about time, yeah? Sure, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 46. I'm going to... I'm gonna volunteer myself to do the other Please. spirit. Uh, whoa! How do you feel? Hey, yeah, forty-three. Well, you you did miss one. I did because well, I lost one. Forty got forty-one. So I'll I'll make up for it now. Okay. Do we do we need to but, do any things we've learned or offenses? Or, no, we can do that after. But this was so this was interesting. Um, when you were talking about your <laughs> your family and your fiftieth, I don't know what you have pulled up over there. Yeah, it's pornography. So it's because I thought, wait, I thought that's what we were talking about. So are we not? No. Uh, uh, kids, pornography is an ice cream flavor. Ask for it next time you're at the uh, ice cream station. Extra nuts. Can I, can I get two, two scoops of pornography? Um, no, it reminded me of... Did I talk about my uncle's milkshakes in this episode? Or was that, that, was episode. <laughs> that was last episode. That was last episode. Uh, uh, I think uh, I don't know. It's thanks, been, thanks, Uncle Dave, for your in, in, a, in a week full of Wednesdays, this Uncle, has been a Uncle Saturday Dave's, morning Uncle, full Uncle, of Uncle Dave's milkshakes brings all the boys to the yard, and they're all and like, they're like <laughs> "It's better than yours, darn right." Thank it's you. Better than yours. Thank I you. could, I could, I could teach you, teach you, but I have to, but I have to charge. <laughs> oh, that should be a funny segment. We just do spoken word rap songs. <laughs> have you seen that where people just say lyric love no, lyrics? No, I've not. There's a, there's a like a a candid camera thing where people in a like in a grocery store or something just go up to a stranger and start speaking real lyrics to whatever and they're like, I don't know what you're saying or why you're saying this to me. Been living most of our lives <laughs> in a gangster's <laughs> paradise. <laughs> X gonna give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Readings of rap lyrics. Oh, that's it's coming. Great. It's coming. It's going to do a podcast near you. Oh man! So you were talking about family and how family can and can't belong, and it reminded me of one of my favorite poems. Oh, um, okay. It's a poem called "Possibilities" by Linda Paston, and it is "Today I drove past a house we almost bought and heard through an open window music made by some other family. We don't make music ourselves. In fact, we define our differences by what we listen to." And what we mean by family has changed since then, as we grew larger and smaller in ways we knew would happen and yet didn't expect. Each choice is a winnowing, and sometimes at night I hear all the possibilities creak open and shut like screen doors in the wind, making an almost musical accompaniment to what I know of love and history. So when you were talking about kind of bringing it back to that family, it's interesting to me, we've had, obviously, wild and wacky talks today, Uh but... It is funny to me how that, like, our families grow and they shrink, and they uh-huh. grow and they shrink, and it's it's the things that we choose to be a part of because family ties can sever, yeah, or family ties can strengthen, 
Yeah. And it's what you put into it. So my outgoing spirit is that poem. Listen to it again, back it up. Probably 45 seconds at this point. But um, but I love that poem because it really honestly encapsulates the life changes that we experience, not through sex, which we talked a lot about today, <laughs> but through family, which is a byproduct of sex. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to being all over the place. I so so one thing I heard in the poem, and this might be because it's the third of three podcasts, but one thing I heard was also like this sentiment of regret or mm-hmm. lost opportunity. Mm-hmm. And I and I think when it comes to family, um, you can't think about regret. You can only think about what is. This this is what is. And so if it's not what you'd hoped or wanted it to be, then you have it you have to communicate expectation or you have to change or adapt your expectation to deal with the reality of of the now or the what is. Yeah, and I really appreciate and who cares if we go along? Stop listening. That's right. It's our world, not yeah. yours. Yeah. It's mommy's world. They I I love that you and Cammy have that um you can let the music keep going. I mean, it's just no, it's, so it's there. Sexy. It's there. It's just very low. Well, it's we talked a lot about big bottoms, and I love her organ playing. <laughs> <laughs> when she really spreads it out, and you're just like, oh, that's that's teacher, that's teacher bottom. I can't go. Can't go there. Can't go with. Does your mom play the organ? No, is that you, why? No, you talking about Cammy spreading it out is too. No, much. not Cammy. No, not Cammy spreading it out. No, I I can't. Well, I mean. Cammy and I talk about that on the podcast. But that podcast is nothing but pornographic. Um, the uh, I think the we have really healthy boundaries with our extended family in my marriage. Yeah, and I think that's that's a really necessary thing because a lot of people don't. A lot of people are like, we have to go to my parents. Blah blah blah, and it's like. Your parents suck. I don't want to go to your parents. Mm. Now, thankfully, like that's what my wife would say. Because her, when I first met my wife, she was like, "We call." We We're call like in the dad. whole like after episode. We're like we are trailer. Welcome <laughs> in. Welcome <laughs> into the center side of the sink podcast. Wait, no, that's not right. Oh. Um, she was my wife. Was like we call my dad Saint Don, and I was like, "Why do you call your dad Saint Don?" And she's like, "You'll get it." Oh. And I was like, oh, yeah, no, he's St. Don. Like, this guy literally had a heart attack volunteering at the food pantry because he was volunteering there six days a week. Gotcha. Like, gotcha. The church calls and, like, we need some things painted. Yep, we'll come he's like, it. yep, done. Yeah, like, yeah. he's just pitching die. Mm-hmm. And um, so he's a super great guy, but, like, I I almost feel like I need to. No, no, no. It's, it's moved on. It's moved on. Should we? Should we bring an no, 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 no. Okay. Um, I didn't know how much you had to drink today. <laughs> Too so much. the, um, but like my folks, I really kind of try and shelter my wife from my parents because they're terrible people. Mm. And so I'm like, no, no, no. You don't need to come to family things. So I like it. Sounds like you guys have really similar boundaries. Well, we just recognize that our, our both of our parents have very different lives. Our, our our in-laws, you know, our our sisters, our brother, their families. They're just different, and that's okay. Like. They're, they need to craft the life that they need to craft for themselves. Yeah. Um, and then there needs to be a certain understanding and separation of boundaries and expectations beyond that. Like, just because your family doesn't mean you're granted all access. Okay. Um, and it, it's it's certainly easy with my family because there's mileage between us. Um, sure. I, I would say the, the rub happens. And it's not just, like, the rub with me and Cammie's family. It's the rub that Cammy has with her own family that oh yeah just doesn't get yeah put out there. So yeah. gosh, we really are just digging into it. Like lie down on the sofa. <laughs> I'm not I'm not lying down. Anywhere. I'd like to touch your thighs. Not, well, wait, what? Hang on. Well, chicken thighs, thick thighs, <laughs> thick thighs. What what do you, what's most <laughs> sexual to you? Uh, the thighs, uh, Harry uh, Harry. Uh, Hairy inner thighs uh, on a man. Uh, thick thighs. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, thick thighs. There's no kink shaming here. Do you want to do a spirit? I stole your spirit. Uh, you did, and, and I think it was fine. I, th- I think I would just say, like, yeah, let. Um, if this was an episode of anything, it was the it was the episode of boundaries and expectations. And the better you know yourself, 
the better you're able to understand what you're willing to tolerate, but also where you're willing to give permission. Mm -hmm. And the more that you've looked at, your, once you've identified your true self, you've done your own healing from your own past trauma mm -hmm. and can be and offer more grace to those. Wait, did we talk about that this episode? Around you. I don't know. They all just blend together. They're all the same at this point. Wow. All right. I have to get some chicken sandwiches. Either way, this is episode 43 and uh, come back for 44 or don't. Technology may not work. Please tell a friend. Thank you.